When I started making avatars, I followed YouTube guides just like the rest of you. However, a lot of times it's just point blank instructions, how to add the assets in Blender, how to export, how to upload into Unity, maybe how to add toggles, and then how to upload. I ran into a lot of problems over time, and it took a lot of trial and error, playing with new ideas, and then taking inspiration from other avatar creators before I started finding out some tips that have truly helped me. But I wish I'd learned them sooner, so now I want to share them with all of you. Starting with number one, make metal look good. I remember putting on one of the default Poyomi matte caps and I'd look at other avatars metals and I'd be so jealous. I tried so many things like other matte caps and, and glitter, but to be honest, all you need is specular reflections and then the one that's right below it. I don't remember the name. <laughs> I'll put it right here. You just need to make sure you turn up the metallic on the metal matte cap. Just keep in mind that it's based on the world unity scene, the skybox, as you can see right here. So some worlds might be a lot shinier than others. And then if you want to change the color of the metal, all you have to do is go to the top of the material at the color section at the very, very top, and then you just change it. So if you want to make it gold, you just make it yellow. Number two, testing avatars with gesture manager. I spent way too long uploading avatars that just weren't finished just so I could get them in the game and test them and make sure everything worked. It's a simple package that you drag into the hierarchy. And when you hit play and click on it, it emulates a radial menu. You can see everything, all toggles, shape keys, color changes. I never have to upload a test into VRChat anymore. Barring if I want to like test clipping on a full body avatar, I can make sure all of the toggles, animations, and shape keys and whatnot all work perfectly fine just by testing in Unity. Another thing that saved me lots of time is Pumpkin. Before Pumpkin, if I found even the smallest error on my avatar, like clipping, I had to go back into Blender, fix it, bring it back into Unity, and then redo all of my fizz bones and colliders. I would spend 10 hours a day on avatars, and it was mainly just redoing the things I'd already done. Now with Pumpkin, you open the little menu, you add your avatar in the top section, and then in the copy from section, you add your old avatar. You just hit copy, and then literally everything transfers over except for the materials. I kind of wish the materials did transfer over, but I'll take what I can get. You just need to make sure you hit the select all in that window. Number four is VRC Fury. VRC Fury is still relatively new, but it's it's a game changer. There's a lot of things that I like, like Gogo Loco and having a marker, but honestly, I'm just too lazy to add it. It's not worth it to me to go through that time of adding it to my avatar. If you're doing Gogo Loco, you go into the VRC Fury prefabs folder, drag the Gogo Loco into your avatar, and then you hit play and then you upload. You're done. There's also some packages that don't come with VRC Fury automatically, like the marker. When you download the marker package itself, it comes with the marker prefab. You just drag that onto your avatar and then bam, you have a fully fledged out marker. You do need to keep in mind though that when VRChat updates, VRC Fury does sometimes break. So when it does, you need to just make sure you get the latest version of VRC Fury. Number five, data transfers. I used to go on download sprees to find some clothes and most of the time they weren't rigged. It's just the mesh itself. I thought that meant they weren't finished, so I would just delete them and move on and find another pair of clothes. This is actually a lot of the time intentional. When this clothing is skin tight, you just do a data transfer. Assuming these clothes are made for your base and already sculpted and ready to go, when you download it, you go into modifiers, choose data transfer, select these settings, and apply. You can fix model afterward, but you need to make sure nothing is selected in that section. And that's it, the clothing is rigged to your armature. Number six, making quest materials better. Many people will change their shaders to Toon Lit so that way it's quest compatible, but then they won't do anything else, they'll just upload it. That's fine, but you can improve the quality of your quest avatar. These are the list of shaders that are compatible with quest. I like to give my quest avatars fake rim lighting. To do this, I made a super simple matte cap that's just white with gray around the edges. It multiplies the colors, which creates shading and adds more depth just to the, these really simple textures. Number seven is doing colliders the right way. Okay, so there's a lot of ways you can do colliders and technically none of them are wrong, but your hair will have a lot more movement if you add colliders to your neck, chest, both shoulders, and your boobs. This shows only one collider for your boobs, but if you were to have an avatar with larger boobs, you can use individual colliders per boob. The hair can get trapped between them, which I, I personally think looks really great. You do need to keep in mind, it does make your avatar less optimized, but 
Honestly, it's 2023. What avatar is optimized nowadays? Number eight, add fizz bones faster. Sometimes you'll get hairstyles with 15 bone strands. It always took me forever because I selected one bone strand, added a fizz bone, selected the next, added a fizz bone, and, and so on. Maybe this was obvious for everyone else, but this one shocked me. I only learned this a few months ago. First, make all of your colliders. Then you select one bone strand that you want to have every fizz bone setting the same for. Add a component, set your settings how you would normally, add your colliders. And because you've selected every bone strand that you want to actually have that same effect, it applies it to all of them. You can add this one fizz bone setting to every single one of them just by selecting them all at once. Like, am I stupid for just now learning this? I need to do a new speed run with this knowledge because honestly, it could shave off so much time. Number nine, locomotion fix. I used to Google things like better sit down animation, better crouch animation, because I, I really didn't like the defaults. I, who does? There's this one random Reddit post that gives you a huge zip file full of animations, but it was really annoying to add. Wetcat made a locomotion fix for free. You download it, add it, and then you select the V5 option. It gives you a new default sit and crouch that you probably have seen a lot, but you definitely have the option to change it if you don't like them. Number 10, broke your boobs. I used to always hit fix model and I only learned until maybe a year ago that that is a huge no-no. Specifically with panda bears base, when you fix model, the base of the breast bones break. And then when dynamic bones became fizz bones, this just completely broke them. And then when you add fizz bones, your boobs don't move. Back when I didn't even know that fixing model is what caused the issue, I would go back into Blender and redo the body and re-rig the clothes all over again. But you don't have to. When you make the fizz bone now, if, again, this is only if you mess up, don't, don't do this on purpose. When you make the fizz bone, all you need to do is add an endpoint to the, to the X, Y, or Z, just whichever one is poking outward. <laughs> Now they'll move despite you making that mistake. Number 11, flat skin. If all you did was add skin texture to your body, you might be disappointed when you see that the skin is very flat. This is all personal taste, but I like to add rim lighting, specular reflections, and glitter. You could also add a skin matte cap. If you're not going for a booth avatar, personally, I prefer a bit of shine on the body. It just gives a lot more depth and feeling to the body. Again, though, this is all personal taste. If you like it flat and boring, just ignore that tip. Number 12, custom pick for your avatar. Why are we uploading avatars with T-poses? People will look up your profile and they'll see your avatar in a T-pose. Stop it. Take a picture in VR chat, add it to your Unity project. When you select that photo, change it to Sprite at the top and then click apply. Drag it into your scene. It's that easy. When you upload, you take the camera, drag it over to your picture, and you upload. And now you don't have a T-posing avatar. Number 13 is use Jinxie to find assets. This one might be obvious because Jinxie is so well known, but when I first started, we didn't even have Jinxie. I didn't even know about Gumroad until a few months in, so I would get my assets from DeviantArt. First of all, most of these assets are ripped, like TDA models. Technically, the creator of these models says it's okay for personal use, but if you can avoid doing this, you should. Your assets are going to be a lot better anyway. Go to Jinxie and in the marketplace, you search assets. You can set the price to free if you're cheap, and you'll find so many options for your avatar. The asset marketplace is insane nowadays. You shouldn't have any problem finding what you're looking for. Number 14, how to prevent clipping. I used to delete the body underneath the clothes. Okay, I still do, but only when I'm making really small avatars that don't even have any toggles. When I didn't know any better and I still wanted the avatar to have a nude option, I would actually add a second body to my avatar. I would use the animations to toggle between the body with the deleted parts and then the body without the deleted parts. There's a much better way you can do this and that's using shape keys. Go down to object data properties and select the plus twice on shape keys. You just have to make sure that there's a basis option. The one below that you can rename to whatever piece of clothing you're going to make the shape key for. If you have a shirt where you need to prevent clipping on the arm, select the arm as you would normally in edit mode, but instead of deleting, press Alt and S and then drag down. Now when the shape key turns on, the arms become smaller. 
When you create the toggle for the shirt in Unity, you add the blend shape to the same animation you created the toggle for. If you don't need toggles or animations, you just click on the body, expand the blend shape section, and you turn up the blend shape there. Now you have a complete non-destructive way to avoid clipping in your clothes. And those are my tips for you that I wish I'd known ages ago, that I only learned through figuring it out myself or a friend telling me about it while making fun of me for not having learned it sooner. So what do you wish you'd learned sooner as an avatar creator? If you want to see a part two for this video, feel free to give it a like and also at me on Twitter if you have any other ideas. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye babes!